Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's my joy to visit with you again. I want to share a quick update with you about my sister. Uh, Terry had another chemo treatment yesterday. It's the third of six uh, since her surgery. Uh, you know, my sister is teaching me a lot as uh, she uh, battles her pancreatic cancer. Um, she's demonstrated a faithfulness and, and a courage uh, as she's met uh, the adversity along the way. And um, I just pray uh, that um, we can all just um, gather some strength from her example. Uh, please continue to keep her and Bill uh, in your prayers. I don't know about you, but I made a promise to myself this year that Christmas was going to be different. I was going to get an early start. My goal was to get our, our Christmas letter out by Black Friday and have everything wrapped by the beginning of December. And we started really early. The plan was going pretty good. The house was even decorated before Thanksgiving. I was feeling confident. I This year was going to be different. Uh-oh. Reality set in. Thanksgiving came and went. Advent began. And you know what? I'm still working on my Christmas letter. Still need to get some shopping done and certainly don't have all the packages wrapped. But you know what? I'm guessing that you're right there with me. I think for me and many others, uh, we have this perfect image uh, in our mind of what Christmas might look like. Something like maybe if you watch Hallmark movies, uh, all those different scenes with sipping hot chocolate by the fireplace and singing carols and just life relaxed and filled with holiday cheer. We often have an idealized and romanticized uh, picture of the days leading up to the first Christmas too. We see Christmas cards and nativity scenes and assume that those days were what? Stress-free. But that's far from how the people involved in the first Christmas actually felt. And you know, as I reflected on my present circumstances, I realized that my circumstances are different. But I think that my circumstances and the days leading up to Jesus' birth, there are some similarities. Because leading up to Jesus' birth, they had their own stress, and they had a lot of plans that were going awry. Let's just quickly think about the story's characters and each of their own realities. Mary, an engaged teenager, we have to agree that she had to be afraid and bewildered. How else would one feel when one's visited by an angel and told that you're going to give birth to the Son of God? But what about her engagement to Joseph? What would Joseph say? What are her parents going to say? What's going to happen to her? Now, Joseph, at the very least, we have to suspect he felt betrayed, hurt, disappointed, at least disillusioned. This wasn't the plan Mary and he had put in place. He knew Mary was pregnant, and he was sure he wasn't the father. He needed a new plan. Now let's fast forward and take a look at the shepherds. Here's a rough and tough group of shepherds working in the night shift when suddenly what? A bright light appears. I'd have been afraid, and I'm guessing they were too. Then the angel appears, speaks to them, and then a host of angels praising God. Oh my, this is a story they'll never stop telling. And in a group we don't often talk about, the town folks. They're too often overlooked. But wherever you're listening to me uh, today, picture for a moment your hometown being overrun by all the relatives you know at one time. And picture this. There are no hotels, no motels, no restaurants, no McDonald's. This little sleepy town has become now a noisy, bustling, crowded, chaotic place as everyone comes back for the census. It wasn't a part of anybody's plans. And here, my friends, here's the clicker. Everybody wants to crash at your place. Because why? There's no room in the inn. Just saying, it was a crazy time. So my friends, when we think we have it bad, think about that first Christmas. They had some stress too. And you know what? Christmas is a really important time for us as believers. And it's certainly one of the most anticipated times in our culture. 
But it's also a time we often find ourselves overbooked, stressed out, plans disrupted. And if we're honest, sometimes we're just hoping we'll survive all the craziness. So how do we handle all of this? How does the original Christmas help us? I think in the original story, there's a simple reminder. Fear not and trust God. Joseph, Mary, and the shepherds were all told to what? Not be afraid. God was doing something in their midst, but don't be afraid. Remember the words from the scripture. In Matthew 1.20, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Luke 1.30, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then finally, the shepherds. But the angel said to them, to the shepherds, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Their lesson to us was, don't worry, God's got this. So when we're feeling a bit frazzled, just say, don't worry, God's got this. God will help you complete, well, your to-do list. He'll help you get through all your commitments. And he'll help you once again to celebrate anew the greatest love story ever told of a little baby born in Bethlehem. When you're not so sure, just remember Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. And my friends, if they could navigate their first Christmas, we certainly can handle this one. Why? Because God is for us. God is with us. God loves us. And God's got this. And you know what? Experience tells me that every time you turn to him, he won't turn away. So my friends, don't worry. God's got this. And my friends, we're going to all get through this one way or another. And with God's help, we might even enjoy most of it. Amen. Ah, some things that I want to share with you today uh, as we uh, see some really neat things happening here at Wesley Church. This Sunday, December 12th, is going to be a great, great Sunday here. The children are going to be doing their play uh, during the worship service, and we are so excited to see and hear their version of the Christmas story. Now, here, I uh, need to point out uh, for those who watch us online, because of copyright law, we only can stream that service live one time, and then after the service is done, we must take it down. So please do make plans to watch us live at 9 a.m. It will not be available after the service. Um, also on Sunday following the service, uh, we will be having brunch. Looking forward to being able to uh, break bread together. If you are planning on bringing food donations for the food boxes, we need to ask you to bring them to the church no later than Wednesday, December 15th. They'll be packed up the next morning and handed out uh, that weekend. And we certainly thank you for your vital support of uh, the food box ministry. And then uh, we need to be talking about it, but our Christmas Eve service is coming soon. Uh, we'll be holding one service this year at 7 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful time. I have a story that I will be telling the children. We're going to sing some of our favorite carols, and always we end the service with that special time of candle lighting. We look forward to being able to gather in person this year, uh, and we will continue, uh, as we always do, to live stream uh, our services. Well, thank you for visiting with me. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, I'm being real today, and sometimes, I'm sorry, but I do stress out before Christmas, and sometimes I miss out on the real message of the season. Help all of us to remember that you are with us, and if we trust you, things will all work out. Maybe not just the way we planned, but it'll work out the way you designed them to be. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, it's been good visiting with you today. We'll talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.